Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a hot topic that I've heard all throughout the week at ETH Denver, which is really around AI and Web3. Um, and for those that may not know, um, I am the founding officer of a project called the Filecoin Foundation. We do long-term governance of the Filecoin network. And we are also the largest decentralized storage network in the world. And so we definitely want to talk about what we're doing in this topic, but also why it's more important than ever to have decentralized storage when we think about the growth in AI. So first off, um, what you see behind me is actually a map of all of our data centers around the world. The way that our decentralized storage network works is we have 3,300 storage providers today um, in every single continent that are running their own storage operation. These can be 100-person operations, huge data centers, some with even more security than going through the airport. And others are more mom and pop shops, people who want to really think about storing local data and doing so that doesn't really belong in big tech. So uh, this is just to show the scale of um, our data centers worldwide. And why AI? Well, for those that are not as familiar, AI is growing at an absurdly large rate. Enterprises are adopting AI. By 2030, we're looking at a 34% growth and a huge market uh, out there. Uh, in fact, around, I think, 11.4 um, billion. So this is, um, I think it's worth even more today from that 2021 statistic behind me. Why is storage so important? Well, this is a pretty obvious answer. Data is the fuel of AI. Um, today, the more data a model is trained out, out of, the more accurate um, an AI data set is, right? And when you are thinking about use cases out there, um, we want to make sure that the data most AI is trained on is coming from verified sources. And so this is, um, these are critical reasons why decentralized storage is so important, because we can really take the cryptographic proof um, used in blockchain to, de to determine where troves of data today originate, how and where data is stored. We have the ability to prove where it's being stored and when it's being altered, who can access them and for how long, as well as also evaluate how AI models are leveraging this data. And there are really three advantages to uh, Filecoin that I, I will go through today. The first is really the scale and cost. Um, today, AI is very, very expensive to compute, but also we're using more data than ever, and that storage cost is also really high. It's a barrier for a lot of companies today to innovate if they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars on their AWS bill every month. The second I'm going to talk about is trust through our proof of storage mechanism. And then third is really resilience to monopoly ownership. Who here has had to pay Apple more and more dollars every month because you've run out of storage? And I don't know what that number will be when we're 50 or 100 years from now, but I'm sure that data cost will continue to be higher and higher. And so we definitely want to make sure that people are also storing their data in a place that isn't really hard to recover and something that users can afford to, to access at any point in time. So um, I did want to talk about first just the scale of the amount of data that AI produces at any point. On the left, you see self-driving cars. If you have ever visited San Francisco recently, you'll see that these cars are everywhere. But if you guys don't know this, each self-driving car produces around 1.4 terabytes of data per hour. And that is around 5.8 petabytes per year, just one car alone. If there are traffic accidents or issues that happen, and this actually happened in San Francisco, local officials will want to see that data. <laughs> they want to see where the cars are trained off of, right? So we're really talking about real world use cases today where uh, storing and archiving data is really critical for all kinds of innovation in AI. And then on the right, um, obviously, um, a lot of products in AI like ChatGPT, uh, they are trained off of tons of different models and data sets. And storing that uh, definitely takes a lot of storage and compute power. And this brings me to why Filecoin or why decentralized storage solutions. Filecoin is really built to scale with AI. Um, 
Today, like I said before, we are the largest storage network out there. We have around 7.1 exabytes of available storage, and we're only growing as we have more and more storage providers enter our ecosystem. So um, that, that is enough to train ChatGPT around 15 million times. Um, but you can also imagine the businesses built on AI that will need that storage and compute power. The other thing about AI is trust in AI is actually de uh, declining. Um, we were just at Davos two months ago where we met with a number of policymakers and people that are not necessarily crypto native, but they're also not technology native. And they are so scared about AI because it's really hard to trust. Um, in fact, 61% of people today are worried about trusting AI. We've seen scam phone calls by AI today, there's been a lot of other use cases like deep fakes that really w make people wary about using or interfacing with AI. And only one in two people actually think the benefits of AI outweigh the risks. So um, this is where the trust layer really comes in. How do we actually make sure that it's safe and safe enough that we can trust? So one unique aspect of Filecoin is we have something known as proof of storage, which really proves that data is being stored somewhere, and that is being actually checked every 24 hours. So um, this is something that has allowed us to really verify where data is coming from and how it's being altered over time. On the right, you can see here, this is actually a project that we funded um, around a year and a half ago. Um, a group called Starling Lab at Sanford University was using our technology to really make sure that journalists and everyday citizen journalists on the ground in Ukraine, they can actually use photos around what's happening in the war and let that photograph be evidence used in international criminal court one day. And as you guys may be aware of, um, disinformation, misinformation has been online for a while now, and most people want to make sure that they can prove <laughs> that an image is what it is, and that it wasn't taking photos from a war from 20 years ago and repurposing that in front of a headline. So those are just use cases of our technology, but also all kinds of decentralized storage, why it's so powerful than ever, because people don't necessarily know what to trust anymore. They don't know if an image has been altered or if it's generated completely by AI, and we can actually prove this out. And we are working with a ton of different startups and companies to do exactly just that. The other aspect is transparency and provenance. And so um, a lot, this is a big debate in AI right now over models and making sure those models are open and accessible by everyone. Today, we store uh, the largest decentralized network of open and public data to date. And we want to make sure that we can also keep different AI models open so that people can check for the safety portions of what models are being run out of. Here's just a couple of examples of data stored today on, uh, on Filecoin. Um, we've worked with a lot of groups like CERN, um, NASA. We are actually backing up MIT open learning data. So we really believe that a lot of content today needs to be free and accessible for everyone. And so those are just a couple of examples. A lot of these institutions you see behind me, they will have to spend normally a ton of money to just back up data that they want to offer to the public. And so this is why um, having a decentralized network and also the cost being a fraction of AWS or other centralized providers really allows us to also um, be able to offer data as a public good to everyone using it in, in the internet. So the third point I want to make is data today is owned in the handful it, most of the data we see and use today is owned by four major companies. I think all of you guys know who they are. And this is only going to get worse with AI. Um, all the major AI companies today actually have a large stake invested by most of big tech. And this is really, really scary. I mean, Amazon uh, put in $4 billion for Anthropic. As you guys are well aware, Microsoft has a huge investment in open AI. And we also see this as well in a lot of AI companies being owned by China, right? And so this is really scary because these companies will have more and more of our data ever before, and sometimes this is not always the most visible to most users. And by having a decentralized uh, storage network, we do allow 
and make sure that the data that you want to store is actually accessible by the users that want to store it, and also being able to prove that. And there is a lot of risk for centralization of AI. Um, if you guys remember on the left, a few years ago, an incident called Cambridge Analytica took place where Facebook was using a ton of data and companies were taking advantage of this to really target users for election security. And there is also a question of, is there another Cambridge Analytica in the age of AI that will happen, right? So we definitely want to make sure that AI can be decentralized as much as possible and also not necessarily in the hands of just a handful of companies. And so um, I've already touched about this, but decentralized storage networks allow for a lot of resiliency to data ownership. Um, all of our storage providers are like many entrepreneurs around the world, and they can really design um, data storage to be enterprise grade in terms of storage. They can design particular areas of storage to be only accessible by you know, a few people. They can determine the time that data is stored. Right? So this is really, really amazing to have a network of different people be able to be storage providers. And I wanted to also talk about something really exciting we've been working on as an ecosystem the last two or three years is really decentralized compute. Beyond just AI training models, um, today compute and compute power is actually facing a supply chain problem. Um, NVIDIA and a number of companies, um, they have to wait months, if not years, to even get the right parts to grow uh, and meet the demands of what most companies need for compute. And when we think about having a global network of data centers, it really solves the problem of not necessarily having those uh, hardware having to be localized in a particular part of the world. In fact, you can have it almost anywhere. And so I wanted to leave with a couple of quotes here. You guys can read it yourself, but a ton of people um, definitely are bullish on decentralized storage, decentralized compute. And um, we truly believe that Filecoin is going to be a market leader in uh, really thinking about the next generation of AI as we, we think about the challenges that AI faces when it comes to having all your data in the hands of just a few companies. So thank you so much. I'll stay around uh, to answer any questions. I don't know if there's any, and I think I have some extra time. So any questions from the audience? And if, if folks want to keep in touch, my email is on this first slide. So definitely reach out if you're interested in collaborating, working with us. And thank you so much for having me.